golden fields of heavy-headed grain the go thousands of wheat farmers. A typical farmer of the wheat belt, Mr. White, begins his year's work by turning over the soil, turning over the fertile soil of his fields with gang plows pulled by his tractor. I'll take it now for a few hours, Dad. Finished 25 acres yesterday, Tom. Ought to be done by Saturday night. Sure, we'll make it, Dad. How's this holding out? Enough left for a couple of hours. With modern machinery, Mr. White and his son Tom can put in a little crop. 25 acres a day of broad, level prairie land plowed up, a fertile seed bed for the wheat. After the soil is prepared, drilling time. Into the hopper of this system regulates the flow of soups. At the ends, these are like tiny balls, making its own furrow into which the seed falls. The loose soil covering the wheat as it is planted. After the planting, Mr. White looks for rain. Rain to keep the dry soil from blowing and to germinate the tiny grains. Rain enough to cause his wheat to grow, but not the severe storms that often beat down his growing crop or drown it in stagnant pools of water. Rain to keep harsh, sand-laden wind growing crop. While the wheat is growing, wheat farmers have many other tasks. Dairying, for example. Up for the cat. The milk and butter thus secured are welcome additions to the diet and income of the white family. Much time is occupied also in making necessary repairs. There are social activities as well. Mom! Yeah? I have a letter here for you. Who's it from? I think it's about the 4-H club meeting. Open, will you? My hands are dirty. Yes, they want us both to be on the club program tomorrow night. Do you think uh, you can get your face clean by that time? Well, I'll work on it. At this time, we will have several projects. I took care of them, and this year, we have plenty of berries for our own use. Training in cooking. And I found that very careful sifting of the flour will improve the texture of the cake. At least my little brother to like it. Livestock improvement. I started the care of my calf on May the 5th. First, I had to teach him to drink milk from a pail. And then when he was older, I started feeding a mixture of whole corn and cottonseed meal. And now that I plan to show him at the fair this fall, I've been brushing him every day and breaking him to holler so I can exhibit him. Such activities as the 4-H clubs combine the social and business life of the youth in the wheat farm belt. But now the warm sun and the kindly rain have brought the crop to maturity. The heads full of mature seeds are beginning to bend as a sign of ripeness. Mr. strides into his field of golden grain and takes a few sample heads for testing. He crushes the heads between his hands until the chaff and grain are separated. The grain is full and dry. It is time for harvest. For the entire field seems to be evenly ripened and midsummer storms are threatening. Mr. White must have help and quickly. Five one six F two. Hello, John. This is H W talking. Want to start combining tomorrow? Can you run the machine for me? All right. See you in the morning. Looking for work? Yeah. You drive a tractor? Tractor? Yeah. I need a couple of harvest hands. What do you say? Three and a half. Three and a half and board. So I leave. I live eight miles north. When do you start? Start in the morning. 
All right, let's go. The ripened wheat must be harvested and stored without delay, and the combine is Mr. White's way of doing it. Early morning till late at night, the harvest goes on. Harvesting wheat is hard work for all, and the farmer's wife does her part by providing sumptuous meals. High noon and time for dinner. Time for dinner! Time for dinner! Time for dinner! Prairie winds furnish the power for the pumps, for the water with which the hot harvesters wash away the dust of the field and cool themselves before eating. Washing in cool water is almost better than drink after the heat and dust. A hearty meal and a short rest thereafter do much to banish the fatigue of the long harvest day. There are no finicky appetites among a group of harvest hands. The food on the table vanishes like the grain in the fields under the blade of the combine. And woe to the expectant harvester whom the pie plate reaches last. After dinner, dishwashing for the women folk, and the men are once more back in the dust of the harvest field. The sky promises at least temporary continuance of clear weather. And the combine goes tirelessly on, making the best of each sunny hour. A sudden storm at this time might ruin all the standing crop. The combine reel turns constantly, each blade reaching out and bringing back the heads of ripened wheat to the cutter bar. They fall backward and downward upon an endless canvas belt which passes them on into the body of the machine. Here, the grain is separated from the chaff. Acre after acre of ripened heads fall before the blades of the reel and cutter bar and are carried upward into the maw of the machine. Each time the combine circles the field, it cuts a 20-foot swath of ripened wheat. The modern combine cuts just below the head of the grain and leaves the straw standing. The tall stalks are later plowed under for fertilizer. And now, the hopper on the combine is filled with the threshed wheat. At a signal, a waiting truck drives alongside and is loaded with a deluge of grain. For a moment now, the harvesters pause and enjoy a cooling drink. From loaded combine to loaded truck, the grain thus leaves the harvest field. Without delay, the wheat goes on its way to the nearest elevator, for today's market may be favorable. This is the harvest field routine, from dawn to dusk, from field to combine, from combine to truck, from combine to truck, and from truck to elevator. At the elevator, located on a spur of the nearest railroad, Mr. White sells his grain. Some elevators are cooperative, some are owned locally, and some by milling interests far off. These two simple devices, the end gate on the truck and a grated on the driveway beneath, permit rapid delivery that wheat harvest travels. Processed and mixed and kneaded. Mixed and kneaded and weighed. Weighed and rolled and put into pan and baked. Baked and sliced for our convenience. Bread, our half of life. Toil of thousands of farmers graciously grant a golden harvest. <laughs>